Robin Hood. And what nice can I say about it? Well, at least Coco came back. And Coco is still a lot of woman. And for undisclosed reasons, she may be my favourite character in the entire show. It's either her or Little John, and frankly there isn't even much competition. Coco is one of the members of the bad guy Guy Gisborne's gang. And it's a three-person gang, including himself. And dear lord, the absolute state of that woman. Coco is not a very tall lady. A dwarf. A bit catty there, Michelle Yeoh, but I get your point. And if you don't understand that clip, it's a running joke from my coverage of the show Witcher Blood Origin. And who's that Pokemon? It's Coco! Now, actually, that's an egg timer, although from the silhouettes, it may be genuinely hard to tell. The real star of the show is to have reinforced the seams on her trousers, because if they blow, it's going to be like a daisy cutter going off. And how can I put this? I'm trying very hard not to start off with anything that could be interpreted as an ad hominem or poison in the well, so I'm just going to start by presenting a case. It's Lionheart Day in the show, a party in honour of this man. And Guy Gisborne has returned, and I'm not sure how he recovered so fast from an arrow in the shoulder, but he has. It looked like it went right into the bone, but no, he's fine, and he's returned for Lionheart Day. Lionheart Day is a celebration and party in honour of a local hero, and a large part of this was paid for with the proceeds of the hero's many crimes, including the bouncy castle that Alan Dale wanted so much. I was hoping to see Alan Dale on that bouncy castle, and then they never did show it. And how did they pay for all of this exactly? Because they stole John Prince's car and sold parts of it, donated some of that money to Lionheart Day. Then Guy Gisborne stole that money and started shaking down local businesses. Then the heroes stole Guy's money, and the problem I just thought of is, the show never bothered to film them giving it back to the businesses Guy took it from. Did they just keep it all and then spend it on a street party? Because that's what the show appears to have demonstrated. The people that wrote this don't seem to understand the Robin Hood story at all, because this isn't it. Actual Robin probably would have given the money back to the places it was stolen from, not just kept it. The heroes in this act more like the original stories Sheriff of Nottingham than they do Robin. So Robin Hood and her gang chased off Guy in episode 3. Filmed their crime again, they filmed themselves robbing him and hitting him with an arrow in the shoulder and then made it into a rap video. And let's have a look at that video. Give me that arrow, I shoot at the bullseye. Had that boy running cause he ain't a cool guy. That guy a weirdo, he not a hero. Long like a zero, zero, zero. Try to hide behind the mask, I see the snake in the grass. I mean, firstly, the music is a cacophony of bad beats and auto-tune. Secondly, let's have a look at those lyrics. You hide behind a mask, but you're a snake in the grass. And mask doesn't rhyme with grass. Thirdly, Guy Gisborne isn't even a snake in the grass. A snake in the grass is someone who seems harmless, but is actually sneaky or nefarious and could strike at any moment. But that's not Guy Gisborne. He's at no point tried to hide what he is. Quite the contrary, in fact. He's very open about it. Fourthly, you hide behind a mask, but you're a snake in the grass. It takes a real lack of introspection to say that. Wow, your good guys are all wearing masks. They're the ones hiding behind masks, accusing a person whose face is in clear view of hiding behind a mask. I can't help but conclude that the people who wrote this series appear to be morons, and that raises the question of how harsh I should even be to people that genuinely don't seem to know any better. Boat Rocker, the company that made this, head of scripted content Kerry Appleyard, said the company was committed to diversity and inclusion in front of and behind the camera. And yeah, looks like it from that photo, doesn't it? Just look at that diverse group of people. It's like the United Nations. And how does this show keep on getting worse? Because I found episode 6 infuriating. Right from the recap of previous episodes to the end credits, I dislike almost every character in the thing, and they barely even are characters. And I'm left with serious concerns about the morality of the people that made the show, because their justification for theft is terrible. The show has this poisonous mix of a victimhood complex and entitlement written right through its core like a stick of rock candy. These people think they can just come here and take our things? Uh-uh. We can stop them. Take back what's ours. But nobody in the show has ever really tried to take what's theirs, or anything that belongs to the Hoods. John Prince is trying to buy the building they live in, that's true. But it's not their building, they just rent flats there. The building belongs to the city. 
You don't have a right for everyone else in the city to have to pay to keep your community together. The people in the show who live in Sherwood demand special treatment and want other people to pay for it. And if their demands are not met, they'll just try to steal what they've convinced themselves they deserve. What we seem to have reached here is the soft bigotry of no expectations. And this intro is the gift that keeps on giving, because in the recap we see Robin kissing Little John, and he seems like an okay guy. He's just about the best the show has to offer because Robin is awful. In this episode we learnt that John went off to join the army and spent all that time thinking about Robin. And during that time, she was still at home with so many partners she needed to have a cookie jar full of condoms in the kitchen, and after getting involved with John, she didn't even stay loyal to him for 24 hours. And as the episode starts, he's already upset with her because of her intimate dancing with Marion last episode, and he doesn't even know about the other stuff she did. He's been nothing but good to her in the show, and this is how she treats him. Robin is who the showrunners seem to think the hero is, and I'm not sure I can point to a single part of this episode that wasn't idiotic. I just kind of want the show to go away now. Robin's mum is organising Lionheart Day and she gets a visit from John Prince, who just strolls into the community centre and it's like he's trying to catch a beating. He just walks into a place where everyone wants a piece of him with no security whatsoever and he says he wants to sit down with Robin's mum to work out a deal about Sherwood Tower because for some reason it's going to a council vote that's on a knife edge about whether or not to sell the building to John. I have a van waiting outside that will take you to the Monarch building. You're kidding, right? You think my mom's just gonna go with you? After you sent the cop, if... And why is the show acting like John is the one that's done something wrong? You decided to harass him and have an illegal demonstration in the lobby of his building. Sorry, he was well within his rights to call the police on you. The show acts like John calling the police after you broke the law was the bad part because he was snitching. He was just supposed to get bullied by a mob until they got what they wanted, which is him not trying to buy a building that they didn't even own. And man are the hood stupid. If they planted surveillance devices in John's house instead of trying to rob it, they could have recorded him doing the very illegal things that he's been doing to try and get the city to sell Sherwood to him, including trying to bribe the mayor or get the police to euthanise Robin's mum for him. Just stealing things makes you look like the bad guys. You kind of have to exhaust legal means first, which you have in no way done. It's kind of only justifiable if the system is that corrupt that you can get justice no other way. Otherwise, it just looks like an excuse, which it is, isn't it? So Robin's mum has a sit down with John in her flat and gets the lawyer Marion to turn up and the mayor comes as well. This is so infantile and dumb, the mayor of the whole city just makes a house call because Robin's mum asked her to. The lawyer made Marion wants John to drop the charges against Robin's mum for trespass. <laughs> well, the sheriff is anything if not dogged. This is what you do. Harass, defame, destroy. Tressie has suffered enough. And what did he just say? The sheriff is anything if not dogged. <laughs> Well, the sheriff is anything if not dogged. That sentence doesn't mean what the writer seems to think it means. If you're trying to say she's dogged, it would be she's nothing if not dogged. Meaning, being dogged is a primary characteristic of hers. You just said she isn't very dogged at all. This is what you do. Harass, defame, destroy. And he has a better claim for harassment against the people from Sherwood Tower than you do against him. And him sending the police after Robin's mum after she committed a crime isn't him defaming her. She did it. You put her doing it into the show. A lot of countries have a right to peaceful protest, but you don't get to do it wherever you want. You don't get to do it on private property. If I want to protest the UK government doing something, I can't do and do it in the Prime Minister's bedroom. Though it seems the right to protest in Canada is extremely dependent on who's trying to protest. And a lot of that seems to have been going around. They try to come to an agreement so nobody will lose out and the things Robin's mum wants in order to let John develop the area are ridiculous. She wants him to pay for a new school a new park and a new grocery store for the area in order to let him build luxury condos next to their tower blocks that she doesn't even own. The city owns them. If the city wants to develop the land that they own, they don't have to ask Robin's mum for permission. 
And these are luxury condos that will be right next to towers with a serious crime problem. Who the hell builds condos in the inner city anyway? And even if they did, who the hell's going to buy a luxury condo in the roughest part of the entire city? Nobody is going to want to pay a fortune for a new condo to send their kids to the same school as yours because your kids and you keep on committing crimes. Meanwhile, Robin steals the copy of John Prince's laptop that Marion just kept on her keyring for reasons, and Tuck tries to extract the data, and when he does, he finds out that Marion has an involved history with John Prince. Her dad used to work with him. Robin has the proof in the form of a Photoshop so bad, it's like something I'd put into one of my videos as a joke. Robin is angry because John Prince has been paying money to Marion and Robin thinks she's working for him and intends to throw the case that her mother caught. And that phrase, even the way it's phrased, absolves her mother of any responsibility for what she did. It's phrased like she's a victim again, like she got struck by lightning. And Marion working for John makes no sense at all because why would Marion steal the files from John's computer if she was working for him? She tells Robin that John Prince killed my father. Marion claims she's been investigating Prince. Her father quit Prince's company after learning about something Prince was going to do with Sherwood. And then John ruined his life by allegedly creating scandals and getting him disbarred until he took his own life. But Robin won't listen at all. You lied to us and you used us and I can't let that slide. And she's done neither of those things. What lie is she supposed to have told you? Robin sends Marion away in the middle of the important meeting and then tries to ask the mayor if she can reschedule and come back. You guys can postpone, right? No, we can't. Bill 121 votes next week. Either we have a deal today or we have nothing. The self-importance is just off the charts. The show makes black folks look terrible. Why is this the impression you want to send out about the black community? And it kind of betrays the mindset of the people that wrote it. They don't even feel they have to show everyone is oppressing the heroes and keeping them down. That seems to be an assumed implicit bias that everybody is against them by default, even when the mayor of the city herself is making house calls in person to help them with their housing issues. The ego on whoever wrote this. Oh yeah, I forgot. But this whole thing was just a ploy by John Prince anyway, who had a plan to derail Lionheart Day, cause trouble and get everyone arrested as a way to secure the vote. So he arranges for Guy Gisborne to turn up and ruin the party in the hope that people will attack Guy. Then the police can step in with the press recording everything and spinning it to make sure it would look violent and lawless, which it is. And the Hoods already know this is the plan because they see an undercover police officer in the crowd. So they come up with a plan of their own, possibly the stupidest plan so far in the entire series. They turn up on stage as the Hoods. In broad daylight, in their Hoods outfits, this is the Hoods who in six episodes now have done a string of high profile crimes and filmed themselves doing them. And by doing that, they just gave the police all of the justification they wanted. So what could they have done instead? Well, they needed to calm everyone down, record everything and get the people safely back into their homes. In this case, the police are doing this to intentionally make you look bad. Don't let them. You can use the news crew maybe and call out the undercover police officer and ask why he's doing nothing about Guy. You can calm the crowd down and unplug the speakers. Instead, they start a rap battle in their crime costumes and the whole crowd claps. It's pure cringe. There's a lot of music in this episode and it's all god awful. I lined up for demon. Back to our goal, but we know that boys turn to pieces of the acting copy. The men delirious. This is who you call your king. You can be serious. <laughs> The riot police then come in and arrest people for standing on a public street and the Hoods have to run away from the police and do such a bad job of hiding their outfits that they leave Robin's bow on a table in plain sight and everyone gets arrested on God only knows what charges. Robin and co are sat quietly in a room when they get arrested. It's like a cartoon. Is this supposed to be our world in any way? All they would have to do is record this and the police would get fired in our world. What would they even charge Robin with as they seemingly got funding and tax credits from the Canadian government to make this show? 
The showrunner, Director X, stated that the show was not written with any race in mind. He elaborated by calling it an all-black show, but said it was not about being black. He said it was focused on rich versus poor, and it just so happens that all the heroes in the show are poor and black, and the bad guys are rich and white. So when Director X said in response to negative feedback to the show, my comments are filled with all kinds of really bad racist things. There's racism involved. In that, I think he may be right, but not at all how he thought he was. Because yes, it does seem his comments are filled with all kinds of really bad racist things. And yes, there's probably racism involved. What about the other Jedi spread across the galaxy?